Okay na ba? Ayan. Hi everyone, I'm Cedric Marquez and we are the fourth group. So, me and my team will be presenting our work regarding our assigned topic which is about the process of global migration. Now to start with, human beings have always moved from one place to another. It may be temporary or permanent depending on the circumstances. Migration is a key feature of our increasingly interconnected world. Global migration generates significant benefits for originating countries and also for those who take part in it. It became a flashpoint for debate in many countries, which underscores the concern of understanding the patterns of global migration and the economic impact that is created when people move across the world's borders. This leads to greater trade in goods and services. Immigrants have been linked to innovation and invention that increases human capital. New destinations and new origins of global migration have emerged and is continually emerging, predicted essentially on our changing demography and changing patterns of global development. In order for us to know and understand the idea of global migration, we should first recognize the differences between migration and immigration. The process of migration involves the temporary movement of a person from one place to another, given the premises that it is not limited to a core within the borders of the same country. It can also mean to cross international borders. On the other hand, immigration involves the same process, but then proceeds with the movement of permanent residency. This occurs when a person crosses an international borders then decides to become a permanent resident of his or her chosen country. Moving on to the types of global migration. So migrants tend to move across on different categories as their circumstance and that of their home countries um, change. So the first type of migration is the internal migration wherein there is a change of residence within national boundaries such as between states, provinces, cities, or municipalities. So it is a moving to another or different administrative territory. The second is the international migration on which there is a change of residence over national boundaries. So basically, it is a moving to a different country. Under this type, we have three classifications. So the first is legal immigrants that move with the legal permission of the receiver nations. Second is the illegal immigrants that move without legal permission. And the third is the refugees that process an international boundary to escape persecution. So the third type is the labor migration. So in this type, there is movement of individuals from one state to another or within their own country or residence. The fourth is the forced migration. There is a movement of individuals who have been obliged to flee or leave their homes or places of habitual residences. The fifth is the human trafficking or modernly slavery. So, in this practice of illegal transporting people from one country to area or another, so typically it's for the purpose of um, forced labor. The sixth is the environmental migration, so it is the movement of individuals who have progressive changes in the environment that adversely affect on the lives or living conditions. The seventh is the economic migrant, so people moving from one country to another to benefit for greater economic opportunities, primarily from less economically developed um, countries. Eighth is the political migrant. So in this type, um, people are forced to migrate because of state policies which discriminate against particular group of um, citizens. So these people are unable to return home because of being persecuted. And the ninth is the lifetime migrant or place of birth, and lastly, the tenth, migrant of place of last residence or the place of residence. Now that we know the types of migration, what about the causes? So from what we have identified there are three. First is social causes, so maybe there's more cultural and personal freedom, maybe they want to reunite with society or spread religion, or maybe they don't agree with the practices of the area. Second is political, so maybe they want to escape war, it is, it is a punishment for a crime they committed, or maybe enslavement. And lastly, there is economic causes, so maybe they want to escape overpopulated areas with unsuited um, climate conditions, maybe there's a lot of natural disasters that happen there as well as more opportunities for employment in other countries. 
According to the Global Migration Indicators 2018 report, a number of 258 million international migrants were counted globally in 2017. So the summary report, migrant flows, 36 government member states with market economies work with each other, includes other 17 non-member economies. Labor migrants, 150.3 million migrant workers were counted globally in 2015. 4.8 million international students were counted in 2016 and 2 million in 2000. Displacement, a number of 68.5 million individuals were forced to move and or be displaced worldwide. Irregular migrants, 50 million irregular migrants were counted to be living around the world. Refugees, 25.4 were counted in 2017. Resettlement, 100,000 refugees were admitted for resettlement worldwide in 2017. Missing migrants, a number of 6,163 lost their lives or went missing during a migration in 2017. Trafficking and modern slavery, 25 million victims of forced labor were estimated in 2016. Potential migration, 66 million adults or one-third percent of the world's adult population had plans to move permanently to another country. Public opinion, 22% of the world's population is generally more likely to want national immigration. According to Green in 2017, one of the reasons why people transfer or move from one place to another is they are looking for a change of their quality of living. They seek for a crime-free environment where, where people can have social security. Some of the factors include conditions in the workplace, healthcare, education, and other material living conditions. The second advantage of global migration is it can give new personal and professional experience to a person. Moving from one country to another will make us leave our comfort zone that will take us to new challenges such as being more independent by living alone, saving and taking on new personal and professional commitments. Being separated from your country and to your family will push you to be independent and will make you grow and accumulate new experiences. The last advantage of global migration to people that will be discussed in this meeting is how it allows a person to have contact with a new culture that will expand their knowledge about life. It gives us new opportunities to learn new cultures, gastronomy, traditions, history, and even overcoming language barriers. The next thing is the disadvantage of global migration. The first disadvantage is the nature of people to become xenophobic or they create cultural barriers. Not all countries are hospitable when it comes to accepting migrants coming from other countries. This could result to racial discrimination that could hinder the personal growth and development of a person. The second disadvantage is how language becomes barrier when a migrant moves from a country having different language or mother tongue. Learning another language would be very challenging and it would be advisable if the migrant would learn basic phrases in order to make purchase, well, to be familiar with traffic signs, and most necessarily, to handle greetings and how to show exp or express um, courtesy. Now question, why is global migration important? If we are going to see the reality of what we have right now, we would be able to realize and acknowledge that global issues that are present in today's society are solved by international coordination between countries and with the idea of people traveling and moving from one place to another, it would strengthen and establish stronger connections and relationships between the governments and the people of each and every country that are participating in the process of global migration. Another important point is that the process of global migration allows us to exercise our rights and freedom to pursue personal choices and options regarding lifestyle and work that are based in our preferred countries and location. So from the things that we have discussed today about global migration, we could definitively say that global migration is happening and it is beneficial to both the person or the people migrating as well as the country that they are migrating to. On the one hand, it improves the quality of life of the person because of new workplace experiences and as well as education on new cultures and traditions. Um, the country benefits on migration because there's more workforces, so they have more products to create. On the other hand, they are more prone to discrimination because of because of cultural differences and language barriers. So in the end, it is up to the government to regulate those processes and create rules and organizations to help 
and protect those migrants. Oh yeah. Thank you for that. Again, we are the fourth group presenting our work regarding the process of global migration. Thank you for listening. Bye! Bye. Bye.